Welcome back, everyone. Today, we are going to be talking about the Julius Baer Generational Cup, a prestigious event being held on Chess 24. Now, much like many of the recent Meltwater events, this field has 16 players, some players from the older generation, such as Boris Gelfond, Vasily Ivanchuk, some of the true legends of the game. You also, of course, have the world champion Magnus Carlsen, Jan Christoph Duda, and many others. Additionally, there are some juniors as well. You have Vincent Kamer, the rising junior from Germany. You have Ramesh Babu Pragnananta from India. There's Arjun Aragaisi, who shot up the rating list very, very quickly. I think he's around top 30 in the world. And for the big surprise, there is Hans Moak Neiman from the United States. Now, it's worth noting that for a lot of people, after the recent incidents of what happened in St. Louis during the Sinkfield Cup, many people were looking forward to the sixth round game being played today between the two players. Now, I have to stress once again that the reason I suspect both players are in the event is probably related to contracts. I assume they were signed before this, before the recent Sinkfield event happened in St. Louis. Of course, I do not know this for a fact, but that is my assumption based on my own personal history of when I agreed to play two, two or two years ago and last year as well. So I assume there were contracts signed long before any of this stuff came to light. So that is the, that is the main thing that I want to say, of course. Um, now, having said that, when I heard about the players who are playing this event, like everybody else in the world of chess, I was looking to see what round Hans and Magnus would play in. And as I said to a friend last night, I, I said, I, I, I will actually say this quote, basically quoting myself, I said, I'm 90% sure that this is not going to be a normal game. Probably there's going to be something like a quick resignation or some very funky opening. And what I thought was going to happen without knowing the colors was I, I didn't know that Hans had the, had the white piece in the game, but I was expecting something like, let's just say E4 and something like F6. And, and King F7, something like this uh, opening very off the beaten path or a quick resignation. Now, this, these were my thoughts. I knew it was going to be a little bit unusual, definitely going to be very uncomfortable for everybody who's playing. Um, so let's jump right into the game. So this game starts with the move D4, played by Hans Neiman with the white piece against Magnus Carlsen. Now here, Magnus plays the move Knight F6. And after Hans plays the move C4, Magnus Carlsen abruptly resigns the game and loses. He just resigns, gets up, turns off the cameras, and leaves the building, as they like to say. So Hans gets this win in the sixth round of the event. Now, again, as I said, going into this, I suspected that, that it was very likely that something weird was going to happen. But unfortunately, unfortunately, my greatest fears did play out. And Magnus, even without saying anything, he does resign this game quickly. All right, so very shocking result. Obviously, it's shaking the chess world once again, and we are going to move along to look, looking at some reactions to what happened throughout, throughout the day. So first things that we have here is we will change the scene, of course. We have this tweet from Chess24. Another shocker as Magnus Carlsen simply resigns on move two versus at Hans Moak Neiman, and we'll watch the video. He's D4 because this is, his, this is his main move. D4, knight F6, C4, yeah. Definitely. And what? No. What? what? No. What happened? That's it? We're going to try and get an update on this. Magnus Carlsen just resigned, got up and left, switched off his camera, and that's all we know right now. Wow. Speechless, yeah? D4 so this is the first reaction, obviously, from the live commentators on the event, Tanya Sachdev and Peter Lecko, former world championship, former world champion contender. Um, obviously, both of them are very surprised by what happened. You can tell from their reaction they were not expecting this. Uh, I assume they were expecting the game to go on normally, something of that nature. At any rate, that did not happen. This was the first first sort of video that we wanted to get to. Uh, definitely a big surprise for sure, um, but that's that's that was the reaction. All right, so let's move along. For our next reaction, we're going to watch a video. This is a reaction from YouTube. Uh, a 2,700 talented kid in the rise couldn't produce. Uh, he got a good position against Magnus. It was a very, very good game. It was probably an inspired game, you could call it. But is it an obvious proof of cheating? Definitely not. I don't think he cheated in the Singfield Cup. But everything else oh, is still sorry, in Alejandro. the air. Sorry, Alejandro. I just have to interrupt you uh, because the game started um, and Magnus has logged off. What has happened? Magnus has resigned. Magnus has resigned the game wow. against Hans Niemann. Yes. Uh, at least that's what so it says in our transmission. Made one move and resigned. Yes. It looks that way. Wow. Uh, 
<laughs> you, you look shocked, David. Yeah, I mean, as soon as we saw Magnus appear on the webcam, I thought, okay, we're in for a game. Mm. At least uh, this will help things blow over. Let's focus on the chess again. But what do we say now? Um, yeah. This is uh, this is a bigger statement than the tweet, I think. Uh, so again, another, 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 another video we have there. You can tell very clearly that David Howell very surprised by that, and it speaks to what is going on in the world of chess because people thought maybe they would play a game, maybe this would blow over, the drama would, relatively speaking, subside for the time being. It is worth noting once again with what Alejandro says. He says quite clearly that he believes Hans did not cheat in the Sinkfield Cup. Now, again, with the game ending the way it did, it's not completely clear cut, but he says everything else is up in the air. What does that really mean? Nobody knows, but there is a lot going on, obviously, with the situation. So let's move on to one more reaction we have from another luminary in the chess world. So let me change the scene again. We have one more reaction. This is from Maurice Ashley, the, the first African-American grandmaster in the world. And he writes, Magnus just played one move and resigned against Hans Niemann in the online Julius Baer Generation Cup. This is shocking and disturbing. No one can be happy that this is happening in the chess world. Unbelievable. So this is very important as well. You can tell that certainly people are very surprised by all by all uh, all the stuff that's happening. I think, you know, for, for me, everyone was sort of looking at the Sinkfield Cup. There had been no news since that event. We were expecting some sort of resolution, something to happen that has not happened since. So this is where I'm going to give my, my general thoughts now since we've covered a couple of the reactions and what how I feel about the situation. So, you know, I would say that at the end of the day, we have to look at everything, take it with a grain of salt. First of all, Magnus is the world champion. He, at least until, until the match between Ding Loran and Jan Napomniachi, is the strongest player in the world. He is the foremost authority on, on chess, without a doubt, at the moment. So nobody really knows exactly what is going on. I've seen, you know, there are many different speculations, rumors on the internet. Perhaps there's something like there's an investigation. Maybe there's something like FIDE's anti-cheating methods or, or something of, the, of that nature, which is preventing Magnus from talking. Nobody really knows exactly what the situation is. Um, so that is the first thing that I think is really, really important. Now, Magnus, I suspect, also be very careful from a legal standpoint. I myself can say this, that I've already been threatened legally with action. Um, now, in terms of Magnus, my assumption is maybe it's that, maybe it's something with Fidi. Nobody really knows what exactly is going on at the moment, without, without a doubt. So very, very important. Um, I mean, wh whatever, wh whatever, uh, whatever Fide and legal worries that Magnus might have, perhaps. So I think the, the silver lining to all of this is that he is very clearly worried about the state of cheating and chess. That is my personal assumption. Again, obviously, Magnus has not made, made any public statements on the issue, but to me, it seems very very clear that this is this is what is going on so if if magnus feels as strongly about potentially cheating in chess whether you can catch it whether you can't whatever that might be um i think to some degree you do have to you do have to look at it and become very worried about the future of chess so for me having looked at everything that's happening even hearing some of the stuff that ken regan said it seems very clear to me that the more we know the less we actually know and i'm i'm actually very very worried about the future of chess going forward i don't think there's going to be a quick resolution to this i don't think there can be because as i see it if we if we work on the assumption that hans did not cheat he's never going to get caught obviously but there's going to be the suspicion over him for a very very long time if not in fact his entire career and the only way you can prove the other side is if literally he gets caught red-handed with something. So again, we're in a situation where unless, unless Hans is doing something and he were to get caught red-handed, there is no other possible resolution in the near-term future. So I'm very worried. I think this is probably going to lead to a lot of discussions between FIDE, probably chess.com, Lee Chess, all the online, all the over-the-board groups. And, and hopefully hopefully there's some, some new... Um, there, there, this whole cheating situation is taken more seriously. Hopefully they can reach some resolution. Maybe things will change in the future with broadcast scans, whatever it might be. So hopefully, hopefully things resolve eventually. But I do have to say, once again, giving my opinion, I do not think that this is a situation that will resolve itself anytime soon. And I'm very worried about the long-term future of the game of chess in regards to potentially cheating, anti-cheating methods, all, all, all this stuff. So again, not the, not the happiest of videos to be recording today. I was, I was, I guess I would say I was like very cautiously optimistic that I would not be recording a video like this. Um, I mean, certainly after the past week, but it's it's very clear now that this is not a situation that's going away and we're going to have to discuss it for a long time going forward. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have not already hit that subscribe button below, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, we will have more videos, hopefully on solely chess related content, nothing related to uh, what seems to be the, the drama drama of the week, drama of the month, maybe the drama of the year, frankly, because as I said, I don't think this is going to be changing anytime soon. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and hopefully I can come back with some more 960 content, 
some stuff from the chess grant chess global championship or other major events but i do hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to leave some comments as well um broadly speaking because i think it's a topic that we're going to be talking about a lot in the near future so i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see everybody very soon